Hi everyone, this is going to be a quick overview of how to set up an event on the bridge within your bridge group. This is just going to be a general walkthrough of the main steps. So if you'd like a more in-depth look into the bridge, what it's for, what it can do, how to best use it for your group or department, feel free to email bridge at loyola.edu and we'd be happy to set up a time to meet with you and to walk through it. So to start, when I say a bridge event, that's referring to anything that appears up here in this events tab. So I'll click on this here. So just when we talk about an event in the sense of the bridge, um, that can be anything from an in-person meeting or seminar, some kind of performance, a Zoom meeting, tabling on the quad, or even like a week-long campaign of several different event opportunities. So bridge events are really just anything going on on campus, whether it's taking up physical space or not. So just keep in mind, uh, chances are if there's some opportunity you're looking to advertise to students, that can be an event on the bridge. So to create an event, we're going to go to our groups tab up here and we're going to select whatever group we are an officer of. So I'm going to select the coloring club here. It's our little test group. And from here, I'm going to click the events tab and I'm going to click create event up here in the top right. So these templates, all they do is sort of preload a couple of tags into your events. Um, so you can go ahead and select which one that you think best fits the event you're creating, but I'm going to do blank template here. So here you can see this is sort of our who, what, where, when, why, how of setting up an event. Um, it's all pretty self-explanatory, um, but I'll still go through it just, uh, just so you are aware. So event name is going to be pretty easy. Um, what is the name of your event that you're trying to advertise? Um, we ask that you are a little creative in this. So if it's, you know, if you're setting up a club meeting, uh, you aren't just titling it club meeting uh, because chances are there's going to be several other club meetings. So you want to distinguish your club meeting from the rest of them. Uh, this also helps out event services when they're parsing out requests um, so they know sort of whose event is what and uh, what's more specific. So if you could just be a little detailed in this event name. So we're going to say uh, movie night. Uh, we'll say, I don't know, we'll say we're watching cars, cars, movie night. So the description, this is going to be everything that people are going to want to know uh, when going to this event. So you'll say maybe, you know, join us, you know, whatever club we're a part of um, to watch this movie. Uh, what can people expect? Is there going to be food? Uh, do they have to sign up in advance? Is there a cost of any kind? That's all the information that you want to include in here. Um, are only specific people being asked to come? So is this like a, a sophomore exclusive event or something of that nature? Um, so that's all the stuff that you're going to want to have in this description box here. So be as detailed as you can for that. Uh, so for here, I'm just going to say, I'm going to not follow my own rules. I'm just going to say movie. So the event type, you're just going to select whichever one best applies to the event that you're doing. So I'm obviously going to select movie and event tag. So these are super important. Um, if we go to our events tab here, you can see that all of these events are, you know, coupled with several different tags that make up, um, you know, details about the event. So what students can do is they can go up here and click event type and they can filter all of these, you know, this massive, massive list of, you know, 900 events coming up. Um, they can filter them by specific tags so they can find, you know, things that uh, or sorry, this is the event type. We'll go to event tags right here. Um, this is where they can filter where, uh, you know, filter out all these events and find things that they're looking for. So for example, we'll say, you know, movie student really wants to see a movie. Then these are all the movie related events that are happening this semester. So students can know what to, uh, what to expect and what to sort of put on their calendar. So, um, and you can see, you can use as, as many of these tags as you want that apply. So, uh, we definitely encourage you to use as many as you can that apply, um, so that students can easily find your event. So we'll say it's a movie. We want first years to come. We also want sophomores to come. Uh, and then we'll do junior seniors uh, if there's going to be food provided that's all stuff that we would want to include there um, so definitely tag your events now for the organizing team uh, if there's anybody when creating your event if anyone who is also an officer of your bridge group is going to be sort of taking the lead you want them to be the point of contact um, you can select their name here otherwise if you just want that to be you then you can leave it as yourself um, so moving on Additional details, so expected number of attendees. We just want a rough ballpark of how many people we expect to show up, uh, sort of for events to be aware. Um, so this doesn't have to be super general. You don't have to go based on, you know, how many people you know are coming. Um, just sort of a rough ballpark of what you'd, uh, what you'd like to see for your attendance number. So we'll say we hope 50 people come. And then we'll always check this yes here, um, saying that you are aware of Loyola's accessibility standards. 
and event date and time. This is pretty easy. We'll say uh, I don't know, it's going to be Wednesday, and we'll have this go from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, make sure if you're starting event early and finishing it late, um, just make sure you're always checking this a.m. p.m. sort of tab, um, making sure that's correct so you don't have any you know accidental 13-hour long events or something like that um, displayed on the bridge and sort of confusing people. Um, so make sure to, to double-check this date and time here. So where? So this is going to be the location of your event. Um, if you've already dealt with event services, you've maybe reached out to them via email or something like that, um, if they're already aware that this event is taking place and they've got your space reserved, then you can go ahead and type that here. Um, but if you haven't done that yet and you don't have a location yet, but you'd like to find one, then you'll click TBD. And then once we go to the next page, um, I'll show you there's a space where you can um, specifically request uh, event services support and they'll be able to handle finding a location for you. Um, if you have one in mind, you can input that uh, and they can check and see if it's available for the date and time that you need it for. Um, if it's not, then they'll be able to reach out to you directly and you know coordinate um, alternative spots for you to have that event. So super handy feature, um, having them looped in like this. Uh, so yeah, if you uh, would like to have a space for your location, but you're not sure where, um, or you don't have it set up yet, then you'll just click TBD. Um, if it's off campus, obviously you can just input you know whatever location it's going to be at. And you can say if it's online only, down here you'll be able to include a Zoom link or you know whatever uh, platform you'll be using for it to be virtual and you can just paste that right here so that people can just have the link uh, at the ready. If it's a sort of hybrid type event, um, so maybe it's uh, some kind of seminar where they're gonna be an in-person component and you can also just view the live stream at the same time, then you can do on campus, you can go through all the steps there and also include that Zoom link um, and that'll show up in the location information so people who can't attend in person can attend virtually. Um, and that might be a good thing to include in this description here. Um, you can say that it's uh, in person in this location or it's uh, going to be virtual um, so people know that they have that option if they want. So moving on here, so this photo and flyer, this is super important. We want all of our events to have some sort of visual identifier um, to sort of take them apart from other events. Um, so you might be, if you don't include that, you might just get a default sort of um, picture here which for your general sort of club meetings where um, you know only people who know are, are gonna show up um, or if it's something internal that you're not really needing to advertise then you don't have to worry about that as much but if there's anything that you are looking to open up to the student body encourage people to come um, we strongly encourage you to add some sort of photo here um, just to sort of distinguish your event from other events make it sort of eye-catching um, so here you can see the dimensions information so in whatever software you're using to design a flyer um, it's usually pretty easy to just have a pre-made flyer and then just cut it down to um, this size in something like canva so it'll be uh, 380 pixels high and 760 wide so sort of long ways like this and that'll appear here and uh, yep so that's a great way to identify events from others if you are designing a flyer that you're gonna be you know, physically printing out, hanging around campus, maybe putting up on digital signage, then you can upload that here as well. Um, and in the event page, people will be able to see that, um, you know, and you can give a better sense of sort of visually trying to convey what your event's about, um, show off your graphic design skills. So that can go there as well. But we, we really want everyone to do at least this uh, photo here. Um, that's very important to set your events apart. So access and display, who can see this event and who can register for it. So C, we generally leave for everyone, but if it's something a little more sensitive, then you can you know, go smaller and smaller as you wish. And for access and display, um, by default, these will both be everyone. But if you say, for example, you only want uh, seniors to register for an event, um, something like Life After Loyola, where it's an event where you know it's meant for seniors specifically who've been through you know more than three years now at Loyola. Um, what you would do is check some Loyola University Maryland users only, and then you can click here, and we can select undergraduate and 2024. So now, the you know the entire campus can see that this event's happening, but only seniors can physically register for it. Um, so that just keeps any uh, you know any students who may have misread you know who it's for. Um, from accidentally registering, you can just keep it at uh, seniors there. Registration options. Um, so this will you know depend on your event, but say for example you're having an event where you've got students attending and you also have alumni attending, and say those two different uh, things are, are priced differently. So say a student ticket is ten dollars, alumni ticket is twenty dollars, for example. Um, that's this is how you would do that, and you could say uh, you know allow for people to register for either the student 
uh, ticket or for the alumni ticket. Um, and to edit that, you would hop in here into edit and you can uh, edit the price here and you can take a look at all this information as well. Um, waiting lists, when would uh, sales go on sale and when would they close? Uh, when can people cancel by? All that good stuff. Um, and then to add a new one, so say you've got the student one here to add a new one, then you would just click add and do all that same information. Um, most people for general, you know, public events that, that people are hosting, uh, they'll just leave this as the default RSVP. Um, yeah, so then moving on down, I think for the most part, those are the main settings. Um, you can feel free to hop into these sort of advanced options here and see um, what other options you have. If you have any other questions about any of these, um, you know, say there's something I didn't cover in this form that you're looking to include into your bridge event, um, chances are we are able to do that um, just by using one of these advanced settings. So any questions about this, once again, please reach out to um, bridge at Loyola.edu and we'd be happy to help you out. Um, so we can go ahead and create our event here. That'll take us to another page. So we're not done yet, but, um, if at any point in this process, you want to save as a draft, then you can do that. You can click save as draft and I'll show you what that does. So if you want to come back to the event and, um, you know, later on, or you want to show it to some people first, you can say our event was saved as a draft and is not submitted for approval. So it's not going to appear up here yet. Um, nobody else can see this, but us, the, you know, the officers of our group, um, you can see it appears here in our draft. So if I go to the left here, I can sort between our upcoming events, our past events that have happened, and then our draft as well. So that's where you'll be able to find that. So if I open this back up, edit, and say this is all good for the next step, the event step, we'll click create event. And it's going to take us to this form where we're basically um, just telling a little bit more about our event and uh, what we need from event services. As a quick aside, this form will look slightly different if you're filling out on behalf of an academic department versus a club or organization. It still asks for the same information, but it'll just be a little more brief if you're filling out uh, for a department versus a club. So just keep that in mind. So we'll say what describes our uh, group. So we'll say I'm doing this as, a, as an RSO. I'll select my group that I'm uh, representing. So I'll just find my coloring club here if I can you know we'll just say we're doing this on behalf of another group uh, we won't go forward with this process we'll say we're doing it as a as a 27 event um, so what best describes our event so we'll kind of once again give details of that so we're doing an on-campus in-person event and then this is where we'll just ask for support from events so we'll check off whatever boxes we need um, from them and then our further pages will help us to further describe what we need um, so if we need a space room reservation then we'll check that off and then in the next page it'll say okay do you have any preferred locations for this and we'll give those um do you have a rain location if it's going to be outside um, that's where we'll work with uh, with events on all that stuff uh, if we're doing a table like i said um then we'll click off that if we need a money box uh, all that great stuff and if there's any of these apartments uh, here that are um, departments rather who are co-sponsoring our event then we'll, we'll put that there as well um, so I won't move forward with this just so it doesn't get pushed to the main calendar but um, once again you can save that form as a draft and yep that's the main uh, process for going through your uh, creating your event I'll go back here to oh, we'll go back to coloring club and events so once your event is created and if you'd like to take a look at your um, you know, details of who's registered, um, pulling that data, all that great stuff, then we can click here. So we'll just pretend that this is approved um, and we'll click the blue text here for Cars Movie Night. So this is our sort of back end view of, um, of the event. If we go to preview, open that in a new tab. Uh, this is what the front facing you know event page would look like um, i didn't add a photo so obviously it's nothing nothing too crazy here but um the location would go here we'd have the date and time um registration options the details like you see movie would be down there um and all that great stuff so this is the page that it would look like um for our little event this is an example of, of what a more fleshed out one looks like with details um, and the photo and all that stuff. So you can see that by clicking preview. That's the student facing view. Um, but this is your bridge officer facing view. So sort of the back end of this event. So you can see um, a list of everyone who's pre-registered for the event. Um, in order to share this event, then you can click copy link and this will give you a QR code. You can right click this code and save it as an image. And then you can include that on any flyers that you have hanging up around campus. Um, and what students can do is open up their bridge app, go to the camera function, and they can 
you know, hover it over the QR code. It'll take them right to this front facing event page here and they'll easily be able to register uh, from their phone, which is super handy. Um, as you can see there, we had this shortened link as well. Um, we have been encountering issues with this link, uh, you know, taking people to their web browser and then to the app, and it just sort of being um, a headache for getting people to navigate to the event. So you're welcome to use this QR code, but instead of this link, we would ask that you, once again, if we go to this view, the student facing view, um, just take this link up here, right click, copy it, and place that in whatever emails you're sending out. Um, or, uh, you know, if you're sharing this event with anybody, we ask you to do that. Uh, that's the easy way to just take you directly to this event. Um, yeah, for whatever reason, that, uh, that, that shortened link has not been working too well for us. So um, just something to keep in mind. So as people um, pre-register for the event, uh, then they will populate down here. You can see um, the full list of people who are planning to attend. And if you take that same QR code that we just saw and say you print it out on a piece of paper and tape it to the door of your event, um, students will be able to check in. So it's, it's the same QR code and students who um, you know pre-registered or not uh, will be able to open up the QR code and check in for the event. So then you can tell that people were actually there. Uh, so that's a great way for you to tell, um, you know, to, to gain attendance rather than maybe passing out a sheet or something like that. Um, if you're doing some sort of slideshow presentation, then this is a great thing to include in the first slide, sort of the basic slide while you're waiting for people to sit down. Um, students can just open up their app and uh, scan this QR code and check in while they're waiting for the event to begin. Um, so just another great way to get people to check in to the event. And then one last thing I'd like to show you is the workflow process. So if we go back to our homepage here, so as a club moderator or um, you know sort of the person who is put in charge of a bridge group, um, you may see a box appear somewhere down here. It'll have blue text instead of uh, pink and it'll say my workflows. Um, that means that any event that you are required to approve first before it moves forward and makes its way to the calendar, um, then uh, that would be something that you have to do. So when we went back to, uh, to sort of our bridge um, event application and if I had clicked create event there on that uh, event services form, then it wouldn't have been pushed out to the calendar right away. It most likely would have been moved into a workflow process. So I'll show you an example of what that looks like. So if you don't see the workflow box here, you can hover over on the left, my activity, and scroll down to my workflows. And any would appear here that are you know sort of active and pending. Um, I will go back to, uh, so there's none that I need to do right now, but I'll just check and see what other workflows are out there. So for example, this K Howland's listening party, I'll click view. And you'll see something like this. Um, this will be sort of the chain of approval that uh, the event needs to go through in order to be pushed to that main calendar. So if you are the moderator or advisor of the club, then you would sort of be the first um, box here. And there would be a green approve button uh, that looks like this. And you would need to click that first and it would move on to the next step. Um, so the different groups of people that are here depends on whatever group is requesting the event. Um, but if you did request uh, event support, then this is that space that I was talking about where um, it'll sit with them for a bit. They're usually pretty fast, uh, but they will look at your location that you requested and determine whether or not it's free. And if it's not, then they'll reach out through uh, this sort of chat feature here where they'll be able to talk to you directly. You can also click up here to see your chats and it should appear in notifications as well. Um, and they will reach out and say, hey, this location is occupied. Can we give you, you know, maybe this alternative? Uh, or maybe this alternative day, things like that. Um, and then you will need to respond to that uh, before they can push that through and before it can go through the main calendar. So um, very important to just be checking on that homepage, refreshing, um, making sure that uh, you're approving your workflows as they come in. Um, if somebody else created the event and you wanna take a look at it, if you click here, you can see the submission that they put in for the event services request. So you can take a look at that information. And if we click this blue text here, then it'll take us to a preview of once again that student facing uh, sort of bridge page so you can see what uh, picture they put in and what their description is and approve all of that and if you have a problem with them then you could always reach out and just see what um you know let them know what changes they they need to make one final thing to keep in mind on the subject of changes if your event is approved and it gets pushed to the bridge calendar everything is great but you decide that you want to change something major about the event so like the title of the event on the bridge or the location or time or something like that then it may resubmit through the workflow process so what that means is you'll you'll make the edit to your bridge submission 
and then you may get a message pop up that says this has been resubmitted for approval and what that means is it'll need to go through that workflow process once again so the moderator will have to approve it again it'll go back to event services um, and then it, it'll be you know the, the submission will be saved but it'll just be taken down from the calendar until it's reapproved. Um, so if it's something like aesthetic like the title that you want to change you want to add to um, you know maybe the description of the title or something like that and you know that it's not going to affect you know the the date and time of the event then you can reach out to once again bridge at loyola.edu and we can either make that change for you or if you just submit it through the workflow by accident you can reach out to us and we can approve it manually um, since there's no change to the location happening um, we can just make sure that it gets back up on the calendar for you right away if you do need to change the date or time then editing the event is the best way to do that and you will have to have it go through the workflow process so that it can get back to event services and they can you know reconfirm that that time and space is available for the new um, you know the, the the new time and space that you requested and that pretty much does it for the bridge event process i know it's a lot to go through but once you're actually getting into the weeds of it and inputting your information into each of those boxes um, it all comes pretty naturally i found but if you have any any questions at all about this whole process or anything bridge related please please once again reach out to bridge at loyola.edu we'd be happy to set up a time to meet with you and sort of walk you through answer whatever questions you have and uh, yeah make the bridge a place that you want to put your events on so thank you so much for watching and have a great day